Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Just Open It, the YouTube series in which I open recently acquired toys. My name is Russ, thank you very much for watching this video, I really appreciate it. If you're a fellow toy collector, or a fan of pop culture in general, please subscribe to my channel, Karaoke Fanboy TV. Every week I do open a recently acquired toy or collectible, and today I am opening from the Turtles of Greyskull, Skeletor in this samurai armor to indicate that these worlds have collided. The Masters of the Universe and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I absolutely love this line of toys. I think I am caught up with everything available in the Phoenix market right now. I found this entire wave at a local Walmart all in one shot. Um, Michelangelo, Tila, and Skeletor were on the pegs. I didn't see Casey Jones at first. I was like, oh well, I guess I'll be on the hunt for him. And then as I walked away down the aisle a little bit, somebody had taken Casey off the peg, or maybe when they were hanging these figures up, the, the Walmart workers, he was just placed on a shelf. So I did find him, just one of each figure available at that time. And that's just so strange. Is that how these guys are being distributed? You have to be like the one lucky fan that walks into the store at the right time to find these figures. That's kind of weird, but... Um, Again, I, I think I'm up to date. I've heard that Merman's out there. I'll be keeping my eyes open for him. Um, but I'm just going to tear into this guy. First, I want to enjoy a bit of the package art because I did just grab and go with these guys. Um, so some beautiful work here, of course. As always, I think, when it comes to Masters of the Universe Origins and these figures, which I kind of see as a spiritual sequel to the Origins line because... Well, the package is the same proportion. The figures, of course, are using a lot of the same molds and so on. Um, and what we're seeing of Origins now is pretty much online exclusive. After this last wave with Mossman and Point Dread and Stridor uh, on clearance everywhere at Walmart, at Ross, um, I, I think that Origins at retail is dead and we're getting figures like Extendar and Cyclone and Rockon recently through MattelCreations.com. I think that's a bit of a shame. I, I really feel like the Origins line still has the potential to capture a new generation of He-Man fans. However, so does this. So as long as these are available at local stores, I won't complain too much. Um, the description here, time and time again, Skeletor attempted to destroy He-Man only to fail. Until that is, the fateful day, he crossed paths with an evil alien named Krang. Now, with He-Man out of the way, Skeletor's path to controlling the power of Greyskull is finally clear. Wow. So what's been great about these figures is as each new toy is released, the story kind of continues a little bit and adds some clarification too as to how and why these two worlds have collided. Um, I'll tell you this, what I don't know is how to pronounce that word for Skeletor's weapon. Um, Kasaragama? The Kasa fit Kasaragama into hand? So, it's kind of like the Havoc staff has be been turned into nunchucks, but there's a specific word for that. I presume those are like the nunchucks where they have like the big blades at the end. Um, so yeah, I uh, am not familiar with the martial arts outside of what I've seen um, in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and maybe movies like Three Ninjas or something like that. So, um, kind of cool that there's some new vocabulary here. But let's just get right into this guy. I'm not into variants of characters. I like having one classic version of each character. But... Skeletor, Skeletor in samurai armor is practically irresistible to me, and um, I'm excited to see what he'll be like. Here's the mini-comic. These have been excellent as well. I believe this would make this like volume three of this series, if this is wave three. So, excited to get into that. Dark Horse Comics has recently released that there will be a standard-sized on... I was going to say on the newsstand. That's old school. But at your local comic book store, standard-sized... Turtles of Grey Skull, or at least He-Man Ninja Turtle mashup comics available this fall, coming to you from Dark Horse. So that's pretty excited, exciting. It's got to be a Dark Horse IDW collab. Um, 
So I'm pretty stoked about that. Here is this blueprint that comes with all of these figures that shows that there are parts that are interchangeable. You can make your own unique character, though these characters are so unique already that um, I don't know why you would do something like that. Let's see. Okay, here's the weapon. Comes right out. Reminds me a lot of a Playmates accessory with the Ninja Turtles. Oh, there's a vial of ooze here too, which is exciting. Let me get that out. So there's a little, it's really narrow actually. There's a little vial of, of mutagen. And then I see that Skeletor is bound by these plastic fans that I am not a big fan of. So let me get his arms out of there first. I will forever lobby to get rid of those plastic bands in this inactive figure package. And I say plastic bands is kind of a generic term. They're more like straps or something. But it's it just seems so unnecessary. Once again, I'm not an environmentalist or anything, but less plastic is always good, especially when it comes to disposable plastic like this. And it just took that much more effort to get the figure out of the package, resulting in one of these gauntlets coming off. So, snaps on easily enough. It's just annoying. If you're a kid that wants to tear into this stuff and just start playing, that delay might be enough to diminish your interest. But um, let's get this guy going here. The gauntlets are loose as a result of my wrestling him out of the package. But wow. Super cool detail on this guy. Look at the chest plate. We're used to seeing Skeletor with kind of a skull and crossbones on his chest, naturally. Um, so to see that, it's almost more of a classic He-Man Iron Cross. The bat logo or symbol is still on his upper chest, but that's covered by this cape, which I hate to do this, but if I popped Skeletor's head off, that was very easy, by the way. Um, take the cape out of the equation, pop the head back on. And I gotta say, just looking at this real quick, we're getting very, um, I think, Ninjago. Ninjago? Is that the word I want to use? Like the Lego ninja characters? We're getting very much in that territory with that kind of ball socket or joint. But um, head seems kind of loose. But uh, the figure is extremely cool, in my opinion. Um, just kind of getting my lay of the land with everything. Little Havoc Staff symbol on his samurai helmet. The face is striking in that it's that solid neon yellow. And I feel like the Skeletor would have benefited from some spot detail on the teeth, some black, you know, outlines there um, on his jawline. At the same time, the color scheme is so striking with this bright green and stuff like that, that it all just kind of works. It looks like he would glow in the dark, but I don't think anything on the packaging indicated that. So it's just a vibrant color. Um, the back of the helmet is pretty cool. There's a lot of detail here. He's got these kind of, not quite boots, because his feet are bare, but you know, it is a Samurai Skeletor. It's everything you would expect of um, this character if he went ninja. So, let me put the cape back on. Let me put the accessory in hand here real quick. This really does remind me of something that came with one of the Playmates figures. As far as the chain goes here. These gauntlets are super loose. If I had a criticism of these figures so far, it is kind of the bulkiness of the armor makes the figure a little more difficult to move and maneuver, and it all just comes off so easily as you're finagling the weapons into their hands. Um, 
minor complaint. I'm not sure what the best way for how he can hold this. So, okay, I'm just going to put it in one hand. I'm not going to bow it into the other hand. Instead, I'll put the mutagen there so I don't lose it. It's rolling around here on my TV tray. Snap the gauntlet back on. And I think the plastic on the, the figure's body is not translucent or anything, but this the slightly... See what I'm saying? It, it, there's a conflict in the bulkiness of the armor and the wielding of the weapons that is uh, making these figures uh, mildly frustrating because everything about them is otherwise so cool that I just want it to work and I want them to achieve some cool poses on my shelf. But here's the figure in his entirety, weapons in hand. Very, very cool. I'm a fan. I like that the Havoc Staff has kind of become this ninja weapon and that it's firm enough to kind of stand straight up, mimicking the staff while at the same time having a, a nunchuck-like um, <laughs> agility or swing to it. Uh, the detail of the cape is cool too. It kind of reminds me of a cape that came with um, a Hulk abomination character from the 90s, if you remember that Hulk line of action figures, big bulky figures. Um, and there is the potential for this cape being used with other characters, removing their head, popping that cape on. So that's kind of neat in that way. I could also see that cape being reused, repurposed with a different color scheme for other characters. So wouldn't be opposed to that either because it's, um, it isn't uh, cumbersome in any way. It really fits, it, it, it has a flowing effect, but it fits the, the proportion of the figure overall. In other words, when I'm displaying these these guys on the shelf, that cape won't take up the space that another figure would. That often happens with these kind of characters. In fact, I had some characters fall back here on my uh, DC Universe line. I think these were Mattel figures. And some of their accessories, like the Blue Beetle's wings and stuff like that, you can see there, just kind of jut out from the figure so much that it takes up twice as much shelf space as um, your average figure would. So in this case, I like that it's kind of flush to him and at the same time has a flowing detail. It's tapered here. It doesn't extend beyond the width of the figure overall. Um, really don't know why I elaborated on that point, but <laughs> I guess it's important. The, the shoulder uh, pads of Skeletor are still present, but in this neon green. Just a striking figure. A color scheme not characteristic of Skeletor, and yet it works in this regard when you think he's got the power up from Krang or something. This is just what it would look like. My uh, kudos to Mattel in, in giving us this, this figure in this way. A classic character, a 40-year-old character at this point, reimagined with the help of another franchise um, to become something modern and new. All the points for articulation are there. I didn't really dwell on that. Um, I'm sure I'll find some cool pose for him here. And this makes me want a regular He-Man in this series. We have a mutated He-Man where he's been kind of um, kidnapped and uh, brainwashed by the bad guys. I assume at some point in the storytelling here, He-Man will be saved and redeemed or cured of that spell that he's under. Um, and so then we'll just have kind of a, a samurai He-Man as well to counter the Skeletor, and that's just going to look really cool. So this figure has me looking forward to that very much. So once again, awesome. If you're a fan of this figure, if you enjoyed watching this video, please again subscribe to my channel, like this video. Also, please follow me on Instagram at AmazingAZComics. For more about the comics and toys that I love and the comics and zines that I make, I'm a self-publishing cartoonist in Phoenix, Arizona. I have created my own original superheroes, and you can find out all about them over on my Instagram. Again, that's Amazing AZ Comics. Thank you very much. Tune in next time when I grab another unopened figure from the big pile here in my living room and I say, you know what? Just open it. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>